In 2030, when the states meet their final goals, our proposal will result in 30 percent less carbon pollution from the power sector across the United States in comparison to 2005 levels. Yesterday, the Environmental Protection Agency announced new regulations to reduce greenhouse gases from power plants. Geared to coal-fired electricity, the goal, as McCarthy said, is to reduce emissions by 30 percent. Will Canada follow suit? Well, here's what Stephen Harper had to say in question period Monday. Will the Conservatives follow the American model, yes or no? We actually announced the regulation of this sector two years ago. We will, we will have 150 percent larger reductions than those in the United States. We're acting sooner, we're acting bigger, and I ask the Leader of the Opposition to look at the facts rather than this conspiracy theory. And Lori Goldstein, Sun Media columnist, joins me in studio now for more on this. So help me out here, Lori. Stephen Harper saying 46% reduction, but that's sort of changing in 2015. So is it good that there's all these reductions on coal plants and all these regulations against them? Is that what Harper's saying? Help me figure this out. Well, first of all, let's remember that all the Obama White House did uh, yesterday was to announce a target for 2030. So we're talking about 16 years in the future. What he's really done is handed this off to the next uh, president uh, to deal with. Uh, second of all, it just shows so you... So you don't think this is sincere? This is just getting your brownie points? Well, this is all. This is None of this has to do with lowering emissions, and I can explain why in a bit. But what, what Mulcair did was he walked into it because of the, I guess, the lack of general understanding of where emissions are coming from in Canada, the United States, and around the globe. In the United States, 40% of their uh, electricity is generated by coal. Uh, in Canada's, it's much different. Ours is 12 percent because our major, uh, we have hydro, a lot of hydro, we have a lot of nuclear. Those are clean emitting sources. They so, have 600 coal plants, I think, in the United States, and we have just a couple dozen here? Yeah, Obama has referred to uh, the United States as the Saudi Arabia of, of coal, which is what it is. So the, the problem here was that what they meant to say was that, will you do, like, if I was going to be briefing Tom Mulcair, I would have said, no, no, if, if you talk about coal powered plants, we'll look stupid. Right. Talk about the oil and gas industry and specifically the oil sands. So what you would then say is they're working symbolically on their biggest issue, which is coal. We're working biggest uh, uh, the same way on our biggest industry, which is oil and gas and the oil sands. So that's what they should have done, because coal just isn't a big issue in Canada. And the NDP critic Megan Leslie kind of hit back, though. She said, well, OK, coal, fine. I think she learned from that. They learned mm -hmm. from their gaffe. And yeah. now she's saying, oh, we got to have more against the oil and gas, gas sector. So the folks on the left are saying, well, this is a teachable moment. And that, <laughs> yes, we must have some 30% okay. reduction target yeah. for oil and gas. And yeah. to Miss Leslie, you'd say? Well, I would say, OK, uh, you're saying that Obama is, has made an announcement that uh, 16 years from now, uh, in the energy, in the electricity generation sector, the energy sector, there will be a 30% reduction compared to 2005 levels. I would say, well, but do you know, um, uh, do you know that U.S. coal exports are now at record levels? In other words, what the U.S. is doing is not keeping the coal in the ground. They're, they're digging it up and exporting it all over the world. But as environmentalists like her would always say, you can't fool the planet. The planet doesn't care whether the emissions come from China or Canada or, or, or Europe. All they care about is emissions. So, so by the Greens' own rhetoric, Obama is a complete phony because all he's doing is exporting the problem to other countries. Now, the only reason U.S. coal emissions are going down, and this is what the Obama politicians say, well, our emissions are down 10 percent. Yes, they're down because of fracking. They're down because through the use, intensive use of fracking, the U.S. is increasing its natural gas supplies. It's more available. It's becoming uh, economically competitive with coal. So it's replacing coal because of the security of supply and because natural gas emits half the carbon dioxide of coal when burned, U.S. emissions are... So, if I were to say, if I were to say in their confused minds what they should be saying, what Obama... I would say to the NDP and, and to the opposition parties, go and tell your friend Obama to tell the protesters across Canada who are protesting fracking to stop protesting fracking. Because if we start using natural gas, our emissions will go down. Well, that's the first thing I was thinking when you said that. Now, the, the new culture war, because yeah. they're always looking for the new war to wage yeah. right now, is in fracking. They've yeah. made it a, a dirty word. In they're Canada, planning not to, the United States. They're planning to yeah. disrupt everything that's going yeah. on out in BC. They're getting all yeah. mobilized for it. Yeah. So how does the NDP really properly slice and dice what the energy policy should be? One thing I know they're gearing up for in 2015, 
all the all the big big wigs, all the deep thinkers are going to meet in Paris, and the world is going to come up with some new commitments. It's going to be Kyoto, Copenhagen, yeah, but, all, all again. Do you think that there's going to be some acknowledgement of the complexity of the situation you're talking about, or is it going to be trying to rubber stamp no, some they, kind of mushy? They, they'll do what they always thing. do when they meet in Copenhagen everywhere. They'll make a bunch of speeches, and emissions will continue to rise. And the only real issue being debated there is the redistribution of wealth from the developed world to the developing world. That's what that whole debate has nothing to do with emissions. Emissions continue to rise everywhere. And one of the reasons they, they continue to rise is because, because uh, I actually read the, the, the honest environmentalists in the United States. And uh, you, know, before, you know you're not supposed to read say, the facts in these conversations. I'll say it again. That's At the end of Obama's administration, the U.S. will be producing more coil, more co uh, oil than Saudi Arabia. The second big, which will become the second big producer. At the end of the Obama administration, the U.S. will be producing more oil and gas combined than Russia. And it will have encircled the earth with oil and gas pipelines except for Keystone. Where do I get that information? That was in a speech uh, Obama gave in Cushing, Oklahoma. I think it was in 212, quoted wow. in Bill McGibbon's article in Rolling Stone, Obama and climate change, the real story. Now, there's, there's an honest environmentalist. You know? There's a guy that people like me could engage with and actually get some stuff done. Because he tells the truth. We just got a minute l left. And when I think of moving forward on this issue, what I think you don't want the regulation that just ends up costing us jobs. It doesn't even necessarily do what they think it's going to do anyway. You just keep the free market R&D going, not the crony capitalist R&D. And the technology will get us to a point where the industries are changing. I I've always felt like that's well, the role. Everyone wants an electric car. Plug it into your wall socket. Only costs you 50, bucks, 50 yeah. cents rather than filling up your well, car. Well, and the proof of that, that is that, that, that seems to be it. That's why emissions are falling. All, all the junk the wind and the solar, that's all meaningless. What happened was that fracking technology became so good that in the United States they were able to get huge pockets of natural gas they've never gotten to before, and they go, oh, you know what? We can use this. It'll be more economical for us, and it will do a good. It will lower our emissions. It's investing in real science and technology, that's how this is going to be addressed for real. It's not going to be addressed for real by wind turbines and uh, wind turbines and solar panels. It just isn't. And fracking, it's the subject of Ezra Levant's latest book, Groundswell. Yeah. Laurie Goldstein, we're out of time. Thanks very much for stopping by.